Art student Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again, ready for another video. Got my pencil in hand and ready to rock and draw. Yeah, you thought I was going to say roll. Okay, let me interrupt my monologue for a second and throw this in here because this is something I wanted to throw in the original, but I forgot, so I'm just splicing it in real quick. So this is uh, the Batman Superman book, one of the uh, I'm not going to say new one, older one. This, this book is, is, is a while old. But let's take a look at a couple panels while we're here just to help you understand <clears throat> the uh, lesson that I am going to show you today. So let's take a look at these panels right here. Going back to the story, we've got the bat boat here. Batman's underwater. He saw some, he's checking out some stuff. And it's actually Supergirl. When this is the first time she came to Earth, she swam up, took the bat boat. So he's trying to catch the boat. Uh, what is this? The, the light is in. Okay, so this, this is him underwater. He's using a little grappling hook, and he hooks to the boat, and the boat drags him. Now, I'm going to use these pages right here. When you see this, especially this one, you would say, okay, why did he choose this position to draw? What, what made this position so much more actiony okay now why did he use just black on these and um we have the boat just like tearing through these little pier pieces that's sticking out you know why did he choose that i mean why, why couldn't he have gone over top or from the back or from the side or maybe the inside of the cockpit what was going through that person's mind when they drew this okay so don't worry about that that's just ads we have the boat hitting the dock and blowing up and then we got, is that another, this is another piece. Okay, so this little piece is just like the, the last of the boat hitting the water, falling down, far shot, you're away from it. And then we have a close-up shot of Batman coming up out of the water. So again, why did he choose that particular angle? Why did he choose that, that close-upness? You know, why did he choose the up and downness? I'm losing it now as an artist. <laughs> So you, you think about that. Whenever you draw, and this is what I started hating about these books back in the day, is the fact that every other page was a, a little advertisement just to make it um, longer. So, all right, here, let's do this final page here. We've got the girl running and put it in black. So we're overhead here, and then it's a, a worm's eye view here, and then a close-up of her. So in order to make this page flow, I guess he, choose, he chose those angles to show the best of the story or the best timing of that story, something we'll get into later about timing in comics. So you have to ask yourself, okay, why did he choose that? Why did he not show a different angle for, for any of them? And that's something I want you to think about when you follow the lessons, follow along, and then follow the lessons and start doing it for yourself. All right, so let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. Anyway, I thought about this the other day. This is a good exercise for you guys to try. So it's great if you're doing comic books. Even if you're not doing comic books, it's a good exercise to try. And it, this is what I thought about. Take a scene, because if you're drawing Let's just stick with comic books. If you're drawing comic books, there are going to be scenes that you draw that are not action scenes. So think about a scene that's just a plain old scene, someone drinking coffee, someone walking upstairs, someone cooking, whatever, and then draw that. Think of a scene first, draw that, and then draw it two more times in different angles or from different angles to see if you can find the most exciting angle from something that is boring shall we say you know somebody sitting on a couch reading a book or um, uh, opening the refrigerator you know there might be times when you have to do that in your comic so try that just think of any scene that just pops into your head let me think of something something let's say somebody standing at the stove cooking so first thing I see is something like that. and it could be rough you don't want to put detail because you want to analyze it so let's just say and it's going to be really, really rough. Someone's standing. He's standing at the stove. He is cooking something. Now, most times we will do side, side views. I mean, that's kind of like natural, especially when you first start drawing. 
And he's got his little pan here. Man, make that a little bit. Maybe he's stirring it or, or, or um, about to add some salt to his little thing or the spoon. The spoon, he's going to stir his little, little whatever. Okay, and that's the back of the stove. So right off the bat, this is kind of what I came up with. Let me let me just just for the sake of, of comics or just for clarity, let me do a little bit of ink to it. Let me get a better ink pen and ink this. Just for the sake of inking. Where's that arm at? So he's got his pot right there. And the other arm down. He's stirring it. He's got his little spoon in his hand. There's a pot. And the back of the stove. So I'm going to cut it like right here because there's no need for me to draw his, his, um, uh, everything else. But since I did that, let me go ahead and draw his everything else. So here we are. He's standing here at the stove he's drawing and here's the stove right here okay so that's the basic um, idea that comes to mind we have that now if I want to analyze this if I see this and I say okay I, that could that could be a little better let me start to analyze this first of all did I need in this shot did I need to see his feet did I need to see the bottom of the stove all of that you know is that important if the script called for uh, somebody standing over the stove cooking. Do I need to see all of this? No, you do not need to see all of that. So let's just say I chop it off. Let's just say right here where I had it in the beginning. Okay, let's chop it off right here. So this is my part that I'm using. So let's analyze it a little bit more. Do I need the back of the stove? Do I need that much room? If he's saying something, I probably would keep it. So let's just say let's cut the stove right here. Let's cut the stove right here. So, analyzing a little bit more, how could I make that a little, a little better? How could I turn that to make that a little better? So, I'm going to do two more shots. I shouldn't have drawn this big one because it's going to get in the way of the, 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 the other shot. So, let's just say I want to, let's look more of a, like a down shot, okay? So, he's right here. And he is over the stove. And he is cooking his stuff and his spoon, okay? So we have stove, you have the round, you have the eyes or the burners. So his pot is going to probably be about right here. It's going to have to be right here. So the handle is going to be right here. So his hand is going to be here holding that. So it's going to be back and then up on his arm a little bit. Then let's just say his hand for the spoon is going to be right here. And usually when I draw, if I have a specific place that I have to have the hand, I'll draw the hand first and then connect the rest to it. You know, the delts are going to be right here. That's not going to move. The elbow is going to shift back and forth. The, the eye, bicep, tricep is not going to move. It's going to be connected to the delt. It's just going to shift back and forth depending on where the hand is. So this is my second attempt at trying to draw this particular position. So naturally, I'm not going to draw the side of the stove. That's, that, that's too much. It no, there's no reason for that. Uh, so if I cut it, I'm going to cut it somewhere right about here. So right, right off the bat, that tells me, or that shows a little bit more that this guy is cooking uh, with the background. I could put some background in there. This could be the kitchen. This could be his sink over here or perspective. Remember, we went on perspective, so my, my, um, my um, point is going to be right here. So it's going to come up here. So this is just going to be below the, below the top of the sink, so I can have the sink like this. Here's the faucet or something. Maybe some dirty dishes in the sink. Here goes some on the countertop. So let me ink this. Make it a little better. 
There's a guy. What is that? So just put some clothes on this guy. See, it's, it's early morning. He's got his, his T-shirt on. His hand should go around the other way like that. Thumb should be right there. He's got his T-shirt on, or maybe he put an apron on him or something. He's like the homebody type. Cooking breakfast for himself or his family or whatever. Whatever the... Um, calls for, the, the script calls for, or you want to see, so, pot right here, handle of the pot, do a little bit more to the stove, and this is where you would find detail for your stove, and then, you know, could, it could be one of those flat um, stoves, glass top, and the burners, you can see the burners, or it could be like the metal ones. Like so, and then you could have a little bit of what he's cooking, depending on what it says in the script. He's cooking whatever, first thing in the morning, cooking some eggs or some, some potatoes, some fried potatoes or whatever. And then, uh, let's just say the bottom of the, is right there, countertop, sink, little, you know, for reference, First of all, I would use whatever is available to me, like in my house. If I'm doing a kitchen reference, now if, if this guy's like super Tony Stark, Bruce Bruce Wayne rich, they won't have a kitchen that looks like my kitchen. So, but for for the average, you know, do that, and then you can you can always add a little bit more stuff to your background. So we have the second one. Now, either one of these would be great for a comic, but you want to try to get the most exciting scene out of it. And a lot of times it depends on the uh, script, but let's just say this is practice for you. There is no script. It's just practice for you to be able to try to draw something that's exciting or make something exciting out of something boring. So let's try a different one. Now, what you can do is when, when drawing something, the best thing that I'm looking, I'm looking for, you know, is you have this in your head. If you don't, if you don't, of course, you're not going to have somebody with a kitchen right here in front of you. Try to think about it. Turn it around. Turn it up. Turn it down. Turn it side to side first before you try any, you know, fancy smancy angles to draw that. That's why you, most times we tend to draw stuff from the side first, right off the bat. Like, boom, right there. Your eyes are right there. You see what's going on. You know, like I said, we try from side, back side, top, bottom, then try some fancy angles. So let's just say we want to do, um, try to do something a little more exciting. Now this tells the whole story basically. This is a really good shot because you know he's in the kitchen. Um, he's cooking whatever it is. Uh, you can have more uh, counter space right here and you can have something else you know some more dishes or some something else that goes with the breakfast or with the food he's cooking right there some a lot of uh, uh, spices bottle spice bottles or something now that, that way the reader will say oh this guy's got all the spice he must be a cook you know he must be a great cook he's got all these spices or it could be whatever just the other half he's cooking the eggs he has some toast and some bacon right there so something like that when you're looking down when you get as much room as you can in the shot without getting really really crazy then you can add more detail to it if you wanted to add more detail to it if you just wanted to have the guy cooking let's just say let's just see I'm, and i'm trying to get a, a whole different type of angle here usually close-ups are really good for um making a scene exciting but if you are trying to portray to the reader that this guy's cooking, then I have that pot way out here. <laughs> then you can only get so close to it. So let's say, and I'm trying to think. Now, I could do it from his back over his shoulder, and he could be cooking. Let me just do that real quick. Let's just say <clears throat> this is his back, this is his head. Uh, how would that arm go? Like something like this. Here's the pot, let's just say right here. Here's the other hand. And that's kind of like flicked it. So I'd have to I'd have to adjust that. I'm just trying right out visually, just out of my imagination. 
and what, would look, what it would look like from the back. So let's say we cut it here and then there's the rest of his stove right here. The back of his stove right here and what do you have on the stove? Sometimes you have the little clock. You have some of the, your knobs right here. Your other burner, your other burner. So I would have to turn him just a little bit more to face the pot a little bit. So let's just ink this quick thing. So, but this to me, it wouldn't really, it wouldn't really work unless somebody is coming up behind him. So a lot of times you use your camera angle to set up your next shot. And the next video I'm going to do is about timing, pacing, timing, um, you know, how, how, how you do several scenes to make something quicker or shorter. So this right here. So give that a hand, and this pot, the pot is here. He wouldn't be holding the pot like that. But anyway, here's, here's his, hand, his hand is holding the pot. Like that, and the other hand would be like, probably about right here, you wouldn't really see it too much. And then there's a spoon in the pot. Here's the back of my stove. Let's just say here's a clock right here, and you can have the time. It could be like, whatever, seven o'clock a.m. or something like that. Here's the, the, the um, buttons for the stove. Like I say, look, look, see what you have first. And then if you can't go online and like go to Amazon or something, look at up stoves or, you know, uh, whatever else that, you know, something you might need for reference. There's, you know, a million ways you can get more reference. As Like I say, that wouldn't really work. It would and it wouldn't. If the next scene was somebody behind him, or if I had like a hand, you know, coming up about to, you know, touch his shoulder or something like that, you know, it could be his wife, it could be his kids, it could be a monster or something, that would work. But taking just a basic scene and trying to make it work. Let, let me see what I can do. I, I wanted to try to get like an upshot, but you can still see the pot. So remember, anytime you're looking up at something, let's just say this pole here. This is a pole. And I'm going to look up at it. I'm going to see it's going to be rounded like this. The top is going to be rounded like that until I go down. And then once I get past that uh, eye line, it's going, to, it's going to start curving down. So let's just say, here's my pot. Here's the pot here. Draw a pot, bro. I draw a pot. Okay, so this is going to be the stove. Maybe the other eye it's right there. Now I'm kind of going, I'm sloping down, but I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep it up just because here's the little metal things that the pot sits on. So his hand is going to be like right here. His thumb, you won't see the, the pot itself. So let's bring this up at an angle. That's kind of hard drawing from the bottom up. So here. Because I'm out of room, I'm going to bring that head down a little bit more. So here is my other hand. Here's a spoon. So some foreshortening here. With that, it should be foreshortened here as well. So even the shoulders, you're going to have that little curve to it. So the arms... The sleeve of his shirt is going to be curved up like that. And then he's going to kind of be looking down. He's like, yeah, I'm so happy. This, this is going to be some good egg, good egg cooking tonight. So we have that, some little steam or something coming from that. So he's holding the, the pot right there. And then from something like this, you could have uh, maybe like the door in the background where you come into the kitchen. And then you can see the shadow. Uh, maybe the wife coming in, she smells something good, and it's like, oh, he's cooking breakfast today. Oh, that's so sweet of him. So think of as many angles as you can, and then just draw three. This is a good exercise for you to do just like every day, like every day. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be just rough. What you're trying to do is see it in your head and get it on paper to be... He's sorry looking. He's like, oh, this, this egg didn't come out too good. Anyway, <laughs> so you can get it on paper so that you can practice different angles of seeing stuff. 
And I think I'm going to do one more because it's 17 minutes. I want, to, I want the video to be really, really, really short. So, because last time I'm still trying to get that video off. The one I did with perspective, kind of like bringing, bringing it all together. So the thumb is going to be here. The hand is going to be holding on to the pot, the top of the pot, top of the pot, the handle of the pot. Like this. Then I'm going to have, it's going to be sitting on the burners somehow. Like that. And you can have a little bit of fire coming up from under the bottom. That's when you start adding detail to it. So out of the three, it depends on, let's go stay with comics. It depends on a script. If I knew that the next shot was going to be somebody in the background, like just a hand first, I wouldn't do this. I would, I would probably do the doorway and maybe a shadow behind the thing. So, you know, people could kind of figure out, you know, oh, some, there's something, you know, in the doorway. And then the next one could be, you know, a hand reaching out to touch the guy. So now this would be perfect if the guy had some deep dialogue because it's clo you're closer to him. The dialogue could be deeper. Like, oh, man, she's going to love this. She's, this is her favorite, her favorite dish. That has more or this particular one has more um, catch with that dialogue versus, you know, oh man, she's gonna love this. This is her favorite dish because you're far away. And uh, in the video, I don't know if it was the last one or the one I talked about a distance between shots, you know, how something close, you'll be more connected to it and something far away, you're not really connected to it. Like something, if you're above something, if you're above a, a group fighting uh, from a bird's eye view, it really doesn't affect you because you're the third person, you're just looking down, it doesn't bother you. But now if you're right there in it, then it kind of bugs you because, oh, I'm, 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 into, I'm in the fight. You know, I'm in the middle of the fight. Now, if you lowered it, then that, that means everybody's over top of you. They have more power than you. So that gives you more of a scarier um, feel to it. So there's reasons why you had your bird's eye view and your worm's eye view and your close up and your far off shot. And I talk about it in the video. I don't remember if it was the last one or the one that I... This can't get off my camera yet, but that'll be up soon. So hopefully, so let's do something else. Let's say I'm um, driving a car. All right, so this guy's driving a car. First image that comes to your mind of somebody driving a car, you are on the inside of the, the car and the guy's driving. So, and I'll put these in a the corner so I can, I can do it. A lot of times, like I say, first thing we'll do is we'll do a side, you know, and the side, side, side positions work sometimes. So, geez, bro, how does the steering wheel go? How's the inside of a car go? I don't know. It's been, a, <laughs> it's been a minute since I had to draw the inside of a car, even though I ride a car every day. So, however your dads go, use your car or use your, your parents' car or whatever. Remember, you don't need all of this and you don't need the, the windshield you can i mean if you want to be you know mr i'm the greatest artist in the world type of thing but that it kind of takes away from you being on the inside of the car when you do all this and i can put the door here and you know you kind of you can do it but like i say you're supposed to be having an inside shot of the person so i put the other hand up and i put the one hand on top of the wheel like this so it won't be just a stagnant um, front shot like that. And seat belts, however the seat belts go, like that. So this is the guy driving the car. Quick rough ink. You know, he's got that, that 12 and 6 position going on. And whatever clothes he's got on, you know, I'm not really worried about that. He's paying attention. He's looking up. Car seat, whatever kind of car he's got. Toyota Camry, whatever. So I put the, you see the side of this and you see a little bit of front of it. That gives it, give you a little more turn angle to it. Same way you see the other hand and it gives you a little bit more turn angle. So it won't just be so stagnant and straight on forward. And, well, yeah, yeah, whatever, however that, that dash is going to look. So, 
you don't need to see the person sitting down in the car. You don't need to see his foot on the on the gas pedal or, or however, like that. The more the further away that you 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 pull back, the less exciting, the less um, engaging you are with that drawing. So let's just say this. As I say, it doesn't even have to be comic books. You could be doing a pinup, or you could be just doing a character shot or something. So, remember, there's no roof. We've seen this guy from the inside. That's my first drawing right there. So, I said, okay, now, that's cool and all, but how can I make it a little more exciting? So, if I'm driving the car, I don't know if I would do an upshot looking down. To me, that would take something away. So let's just do a front shot. And it doesn't always have to be front. It could be angled a little bit from the front. So uh, let's do that. Okay, let's, let's take him, and I'm going to angle him like that way. So the arm is down. Let's do the steering wheel. How high is the steering wheel in your face? About like this, okay? So as I say, if I have to put the hands somewhere then i will draw the hands first and i will connect the arms so here's my collarbone here's my delt these are not going to move so draw these first draw your, your your torso collarbone and your delts then you can connect the rest of the hands and i usually do the forearm first let's just say like right here so my delts my my um bicep triceps are going to be like foreshortened right here like that. So I've got this one here. You're not going to see that. It's going to go down like this. And then the other part is going to be there. So you got this. Let me get a red pencil so I can do a draw through. So this one, let's say this is going to be my hand right here. Where's that thumb? That thumb is going to be right there. Okay, got it. Got it. I don't know why. Sometimes I draw a left hand for the right hand and a right hand for the left hand. Who knows why? So I'm going to do that. Like this is going to be just um, my oval from here. You probably won't see any arm. Like if I did this, you see that oval. You won't see too much of this. It's just taking that oval shape. And then I will do my, or maybe it'll go down a little bit. Maybe that'll go down. And then it's, this is going to come up. That part's going to come up like that. So, and then here's my hand again, driving that wheel. It's got a little bend in it, so it's going to have to go down and it goes up like that. So, my steering wheel is, wow, how do you take a steering wheel and lean it, lean it back instead of making it, that's, uh, that's weird, yeah. I've really never done that before. It'll be thicker here and, and thinner there to make it look like it's leaning a little bit. And then whatever, however, however the inside of your wheel is, and then you have your whatever part is hooked to, and then your part right there. So yeah, okay, go in your car, sit in the in the in the rear seat behind the passenger. No, you, you couldn't do that. You'd be looking at the, the back. Wow, go in your car and look at your wheel and see how it's made. <laughs> and then of course. Your headrest, and as I said, I turned them a little bit so you would see a little side of that headrest, and then the seat, of course, your seat belt like that. This would be the weird part because right there you would have your your um thinking about it, you would have your dash right here. So would that work? That would work if you cut it. The steering wheel is a little below the dash, is it? Is the steering wheel above the dash? I think it might be above the dash, just a little bit. And that steering wheel is greatly low. So let's do this, let's ink this where I think the steering wheel is gonna be at. And again, since I did it from the side, the steering wheel is gonna be about right here. Let's just say that steering wheel is above that dash somehow. Here is his hand, just draw some fingers, Brian. And then the other part of the hand, the other part of the hand, the other hand, and then let's just say my the dash is right here. So you wouldn't see the body. So then we have the delt, the forearm, and the forearm and the bicep tricep. And 
understand I have not drawn anybody driving a car in a very long time. As I say, reference. Have that. You have this is behind the wheel. So that's cool. And you have the face. So would that work if you went and looked at a car? I guess you'd have to look at uh, it from the front of the car to at the steering wheel and the chair. Take a picture of it. That's why we have cameras. Take a picture of it and then use that. At least you will know if the steering wheel goes over the dash or not. I can't. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I don't certain cars because I know some of them have the round, round monitor, the round things and like that. So I don't know. So is this a bus? No, it's not. It is really good because number one is close, and by being close and you being right there, you can kind of kind of get into his thoughts because you're you're right there with him. This one is kind of like. Eh, I don't know. Maybe if I drew the passenger seat, a passenger, passenger seat next to, next to, next to him, it could be like you are the passenger riding with him while he's talking or singing or listening to music or something like that. This one, because it's more closer, then you'd be right up there with him. If I did another angle, I would not do an up angle because that is just weird because you have so much stuff down here that it would be hard to do an upper angle. You can do it, but it would just be really, really hard to do. So if I had the side, the front, I could do a back angle, but that takes away from, takes away from him. You just, like I said, you're overhead, so it, it's not gonna bother you doesn't bother you or doesn't affect you and that would be kind of hard to do so uh, let me just let me just throw throw something in here and let's see if it works this is the seat this is the this is the headrest this is his head shoulders the seat is going leans back um his leg the other leg see that that would not be the feasible that would be that wouldn't be the one that I would choose to do yeah see that that wouldn't be let me try to ink this so you can actually kind of understand the mess I just made his head chest going to his shoulder going to that one arm how's that on that arm is up top that hand is up top here chest, this hand, this is his belt right here, this arm is going to come down, this arm is going to come up and grab the side of that wheel, so you're going to have some crotch right there because you're going to have a leg here and a leg here, so see that, to me that wouldn't really work, so in an instant, in, in, in this instant, in this instance, I would have to say that's the most simpler one to do. I like this, depending on the conversation, depending on the conversation, you can just by doing him by himself, he could be kind of lost in thought. So if you put like another seat next to him, that seat is really close. An empty seat next to him, <clears throat> it gives you kind of like room to, It could kind of show that he's lonely. It could kind of show that somebody is missing or he's going to pick someone up by having that empty seat right there because it has to be meaning. You wouldn't just draw an empty seat for no reason. It just, it, it depends on the conversation. It's like, you know, I'll, I'll be there in about five minutes to pick you up or whatever, you know, and the seat is empty. So yeah, it makes sense to have the seat there. So side, top, and this is where you're going to have to kind of move stuff around let me get my figure just because I might be able to reach him without having to stand up and let's see invest in yourself I say this several times invest in yourself and if you can if this is something that you're really serious about uh invest in yourself so let's just say this guy is driving a car right so one hand on top of the wheel, one hand on the side of the wheel. 
And if I ever become a millionaire, multi-millionaire, I'm going to create figures like this, a little step better, like one that has can hold two guns or two knives or two swords or something like that. These are good, but they only have what, one gun fist or one, one hand fist or knife fist or whatever. So anyway, here we have basically a driving position. Now I have it from the side here like this. Pretty close, Brian, yeah. And I have it from the front here, but the whole dash thing. So could you do it from the top? You could, but that kind of takes away from stuff because you'd have to cut the roof out or you'd have to see through the roof to see down in on it. And it'd have to be more like a close up, but you really can't get any detail from that. <clears throat> I have a dry throat. The more I talk, the drier it gets. <coughs> So, and I, off, offhand, it's hard to think of a, a good position. So this is why you can get something. I mean, any figure that is articulated, it could be a Wolverine. It could be, you're just trying to get the position. It could be any kind of figure. But best to get a figure that doesn't have like um, belts and holsters and, and gadgets. Something like a Black Panther figure or some figure that's just, you know, skin tight. If you can't afford something like this. So if I had it, I would... Kind of, okay, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm going to try to show it in the camera. I would look at the best angle that I can for this. Remembering, you're not going to be able to see the bottom. You're not going to be, see, be able to see any of that. So you kind of like, and this is what you want to do mentally. If you don't have a figure, just kind of say, okay, would this work? How would this work? You want to swing the figure around in your head. So I would say in this case, I don't know. I, I kind of this is kind of nice. Now I could flip it and have him the the view from the opposite side without seeing the seat. You know that that could work as well, depending on the direction he's supposed to be going. But mentally, just see that. And if you have a figure, take a camera. Take your your camera and pose it as best you can. These come with these stands, so you can always pose it and then set it up. Get your camera right, and then just kind of take a picture of it as be, you know from the best angle you can, and then try to draw it from that. So, being that that's a hard enclosed position, I would go with. I like this one though. I don't know. I like that one, but as I said, it depends on the type of car. That's why I angled it more like this. It's not quite like that. But I angled it like that. So if I was going to, if, if, if I was going to draw the guy driving, I would put him in that box. Shoulders would go this way. The wheel would come up here. So I'm a, I got above him. No, I'm below. I'm below because this is where your your vanishing point and your eye line is right there. And that's one of the things that they talk about in perspective is doing the monkey bars. Well, it's like kind of like this, your monkey bars. And then you can put, I don't want to go crazy with this because it, 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 it'll drive me crazy trying to figure that out. And then because you always have your squares in here somewhere, you can start putting your characters in, not just your characters, your background in these squares. So basically these squares are kind of almost invisible so that you can draw somebody in perspective. Right. I'll try to explain that a little bit more. I have to read up on that again. So, yeah, I would like this. Take that square like that, put them in perspective. And then right there. So now if I wanted to put the chair there, here's the, the seat. If I needed to put the other chair there, here's the seat. And I would, this would be my shot right here like that. If I needed the other chair. Like I say, if it's like, you know, oh, I miss you so much. I'm on the way. You know, you miss, I miss you so that this is, there's an empty chair. So this could be the, <clears throat> the cons console. You know, if it's a sports car, you know, with the, the little gear, shift, shifting gear knob or whatever. And then the little, little, you know, PlayStation screen right there. So not bad, but I, I, I just like that. I should have angled it more and went down on it. So. That would be my pick for 
the drawing. Let me get a marker real quick and see if I can ink this a little better. So we have your head. This is a thicker marker, so I want you to be able to see it. Your arm. The other one comes down and it's on top of the wheel. Which is the body, like that. Here's my wheel. Now, I cut out, by cutting it here, I really, I cut out the dash that I can't really see or understand. Here's his chair, he's sitting in his chair. Here's the headrest. Here's the other headrest following that line. Here's the other chair. And let's say here is the little dash or console. However the console is, if you have a console, it could just be a, um, uh, um, I can't think of what that would, without the little piece with the bench seat. So that would be probably my choice right there, something like this, or I could lean it over, but I, I really do kind of like this. If he's just alone, if there's a reason that you have to put the other seat, then it would be like that. But if not, I would just chop it out right here. Still, by you being above him and far away from him, what he's saying really doesn't concern you. By you being close to him and in front of him, it kind of concerns you. You're kind of into it. And the same way with this, you're in the car with him, number one. See, you're, you're kind of out of the car here. You're not so much in the car. You're in front of the car, but yet he's still, you're still facing him. Like you're looking straight on at him. And this one, you are in the car as well. So this, is, this would be a great one for having that feel of being inside the car and being part of the actual drawing because comics are basically stories with pictures. So you want to take, and I should have said this in the beginning, you want to take whatever picture that is telling the story and make it the best, exciting, most image you can. Movies, you know, you have moving pictures, so they can do all this other stuff, but in comics, you usually have one or two pictures that will tell you what's happening in the story. Guy wakes up, his house is on fire. You know, how would you do that? What is this, 39 minutes? Just real quick, this, something like this. First thing I'm seeing is, you know, the, he jumps up, his bed is like, like that. This is covers, you know, pillows here. You can have the motion line like this. Maybe the hands are not up yet. You know, usually when you just when you just come up off the pillow, your hands are still down, especially if you're sleeping on your back. Like this. And then just give a little room. You know, you smoke in his room here. I uh, would show maybe the headboard of the bed like this. And then, you know, the mattress, the cover could be going over that. And you just smoke there. And just a little fire here and, you know, little flames here. You know, that is what I would show if, if if you had to draw the one panel showing the guy waking up from a deep sleep and there's a fire in the place, something like that. I'm close up to it. I'm in his face, you know, so I'm part of it. And yeah, close up and I'm in his face. I'm not above him. So, you know, I'm not like the bird above him that don't care. I can fly away. And I'm not really below him because he's not terrifying me. I had to see his expression and him come off the pillow. So I'm like right there in his face. So that to me would probably be the best shot. Usually the first thing you think about or first thing you see is kind of the best shot. Your spirit will say, okay, draw this. You know, and there might be a way that you can tweak a little bit. But usually the first, the first shot or the first uh, image you see in your head to me is like usually right. He's like, oh my God, what the fire? Where did this come from? His head's all disheveled because you know he was he was dreaming good. And then his t-shirt is like just hanging off, all wrinkled. And the, the arm is still down because he he would push up on his elbows.
And that would kind of, kind of, that would kind of, kind of, <laughs> that would kind of show, you know, is 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 early morning, or or he's been sleeping good because of all the wrinkles in in his in his shirt. Why am I saying double words? I don't know. It's time for me to end this video. And you have the cover across him, wrinkles in the cover, and the cover is going to go down and off the side of the bed. That's all you need to show, basically. You know, a little fire coming from the side. He's not on fire yet, but the house is full of smoke. He jumped up. The pillow's right here. You can have like the little um, pillow dent, a little slob coming from his mouth. Now I'm getting into comic books now. <laughs> the headboard. And then the next shot would be maybe of his face, a close up of his face. Yeah, so practice that because I'm going to end this. I didn't want this to be an hour. Surely didn't want it to be an hour. Practice that. Take a take any scene, just something that comes to your head. Somebody walking up the stairs, somebody using the bathroom, somebody on the phone, somebody lighting a cigarette, any little scene, anything, and then draw that and then kind of like analyze it. Do I really need to see all of this? Um, uh, am I focused on the fire coming from the, from the lighter? Am I focused on his expression? Uh, do I need to show the room that he's in? Think about all these things. What would be the better angle? Do I want to be right there with him? Do a close-up. Do I want to be not a part of him? Do a, a far shot or above shot? Do I need to be, you know, below him? So just think of that. Think of those angles. Think of, you know, <clears throat> in the camera. I'm right there. Put your hand down. I'm right there. You know, right there with him. You know, or I'm going to be below him or am I going to be above him? You know, is it going to be from the left or the right? You know, just little angles. Think about that as you draw. So that's going to be it for this. Practice that. You know, just, you know, just little things. They don't have to be perfect. Just you, you're getting your mind to see it and being able to put it down on paper. So that's going to be it because I'm going to ramble and, and just tell you the same thing over and over and over again because that's what teachers do. They beat it into your head. All right. So see you guys next week. Hopefully I'll be able to pull that video off my phone and get it up. All right. Later. Oh, what, what do I always say? If it's not fun to do, then you're not having fun doing it. Something like that. I'll get it right. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm out. Later.